Alright, hey everybody, this is Connor, sorry about uh, not making any tutorials for a long time, but uh, today we will be doing um, a tutorial in Visual Studio with something called the uh, Ruby and Steel. Um, basically it allows you to use the Visual Studio uh, GUI functionality, um, the GUI builder, but yet, you know, create all the functionality, the code functionality, with uh, Ruby, the language, um, in your back end. So, go ahead and download that. I believe the website is uh, sapphiresteel.com, and you can find Ruby and Steel. And then once you have that installed for uh, Visual Studio, you can get it for 2005 or 2008. Go ahead and open up Visual Studio with that installed. Uh, go create a project. And go in here under Ruby and Steel, Iron Ruby. Select Iron Ruby Windows Application. Uh, you can name it whatever you like. Press OK. It opens that up. Just give it a second. And do it. Looks like it's starting. <laughs> Here we go. Alright, sorry about that. Okay, it's loaded. So basically our application today will just consist of a uh, simple window and uh, we're going to have a text box or an input box where they just type something and then there will be a label that um, while, you know, any time that the value within the text box changes, the label um, changes to that text within the text box. So it's pretty simple, but it's, it's somewhat essential and it gives, you know, it shows you what Ruby in Steel is like. Um, so first off, let's go ahead and uh, find a text box. Go ahead and drag that there. You can uh, keep it named text box 1 if you like. That's what I'm going to do. Um, text, you don't have to do anything. Um, and then we're going to have a label. Alright, and you can keep that label 1 as well uh, as the name. Okay, pretty simple so far. And we're going to, so select the text box, and right up here there's this little like lightning symbol. Go ahead and select that, that's for events. And I'll go pretty far down, there's this event called text changed. Now, um, you can uh, type in whatever uh, callback function you want for it, but I'm going to go ahead and just press enter, and that automatically just generates a function for me within uh, our Ruby file. So as you can see, this is a Ruby, um, this is Ruby code. So right off the bat, we're starting to write Ruby, and we don't even have to touch the .NET. Um, I mean the uh, Visual Basic or C Sharp .NET stuff at all. You know, it's all Ruby, um, but Ruby and Steel is the one that it creates the interface using Visual Basic or C Sharp .NET, and then and, and then uh, somehow links it up with our Ruby. So let's go ahead and um, under text box one underscore text changed. We're going to do self dot label one, and as you can see, it has uh, auto or code completion. Um, and if you're wondering, if you don't uh, if you're kind of new to Ruby, self is 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 the equivalent to, or self in Ruby is the equivalent to like this, the keyword this in like Java and uh, languages like PHP and whatnot. So this dot label one dot text with an up upper case T equals. Now we can do sender. As you can see, one of the parameters that's sent to this function is sender. Um, we can do sender dot text, or we can do my pref uh, I prefer doing self dot button or uh, sorry text box one dot text. Okay, so that's pretty simple stuff right there. Now, the this next bit of code we're gonna do is totally unnecessary in a normal, in, uh, you know, standard application. Um, you really wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't suggest doing it in a real application. It'd be better just to initialize it right here and then, but what we're going to do is um, select this, this, the whole window here, 
and go under events for that and on and then here here's the callback load go ahead and enter that and what we're going to do here is simply when the form loads we are going to set its text to you know f say first ruby gooey and then the label text to uh you know type something or something i don't know say something so it you could just go in select label one and put its text under properties just right then and there as uh say something or whatever you want to say but th we're just going to write a little bit more code and do it this way so let's go ahead and do it um so as you can see the text field for uh our whole window is set to nothing right now so we're gonna go ahead and change that and say uh, self I believe it's yes yeah, self dot uh, all right, I'm gonna, this time I'm gonna do use the sender parameter that's being sent to this function automatically so sender dot text equals first Ruby GUI and in this case sender is um, the form one, which is our whole uh, window, and then we're going to do self dot label one dot text equals uh, just put say some something. Sorry. Okay. So there we go. That's our Ruby code. And now to run Ruby programs, as you can see, Ruby and still has a whole bunch of options here. Librarian, Gems, um, Rake, Ruby Documentation, Ruby Explorer, Synchronized, blah, blah, blah. IRB, Interactive Ruby. Um, that's if you just want to make some quick code within the uh, Ruby console down here. And Ruby command. So let's go ahead and we click this, this one with just a little Ruby up there to run our program and here we go so as you can see when the form loaded it set the text to uh, first ruby gooey and the label to say something so we're now gonna type something as you can see the label is as we are ty typing everything in the text box the label is setting its text to whatever's in the text box so that's that's basically a simple little uh, actually a very simple application um, written in ruby in steel um, but uh, I think that this uh, development environment is going to be promising with the Ruby developers because, you know, it gives all the functionality of, uh, or the benefits of Microsoft Visual Studio, but yet, you know, you can write all your code in my, probably one of my favorite uh, languages, Ruby. I like Ruby because it's clean and uh, you know, I have some quite a bit of experience in Java, but uh, I think Ruby's promising for me, so. I hope you like this tutorial, and maybe uh, sometime I hope to uh, make another Ruby tutorial. Thanks for watching.